So this was just the flow chart that I was doing for the the um, the hundreds and the tens. But I'm probably not going to do that. Where am I? But I am going to start on the pseudocode. And if the pseudocode doesn't work this week, work for you guys this week, let me know, and I will bring up the flow charts. Um, that is up to you. I like the debugger. I work every day, and I usually have the debugger up and running because that's what makes sense to me. And especially if I've got some complex algorithms and something's not behaving quite the way I think it is, I want to run it through with different data and observe exactly what's happening so I can find my logic error because that's what that is. It's a logic error. So here we have lab 3.11 and it's write a program whose inputs are three integers and whose output is the smallest of the three integers. And this is a prime use of the word and, of the Boolean operator and. And this is pseudocode. So you're going to have to turn in pseudocode and flowcharts. And so it's time to start talking about pseudocode because a lot of people like it. Pseudocode is basically a way of writing a program that's language agnostic, showing all of the logic associated with it um, with, without actually writing it in a programming language. And some people think that doesn't make any sense. But when you are starting to deal with very large algorithms, um, sometimes writing it out and not worrying about the nuances of a given language can help you. Um, it, it can help you work through the logic. So, the first thing I'm going to do on this program is it's going to take three inputs: first, second, and third. And then I'm going to have an if, an elif, and an else statement. The if statement is going to say, is the first number, is first, less than or equal to second, and is first less than or equal to third? So if first is less than or equal to second, and that evaluates to true, and first is less than or equal to third, and that evaluates to true, then first is the smallest number. If that evaluates to false, we then go to the elif statement, which is going to check second, and it's going to check second against first and second against third. If second is less than first and second is less than or equal to third, then second is the largest number. Otherwise, third has to be the largest number. So this is a relatively small program but it requires the understanding of Boolean operators. Now, this is the seasons one, and it is the biggest program you will, you will have written up to this point. Um, and this has to be done in this order. I have students who've tried to shorten this, and it doesn't quite work. So we're going to input a month, and we're going to input a day. And what we want back from that is the season. And seasons aren't necessarily aligned with months and with, with the with you know months from zero to one. So a season can cut a month in half. So what we're first going to do is we're first going to check the month. And even if we are only using a single if statement to do all the checking, we always want to check the month first. Because that's the, that, that is the easiest way for Python to decide whether to skip that or not. Because we're going to have months that are going to have 0 to 29, 28, 29, 30, and 31. But what we want is we want to make it, we want the biggest differentiator first. And the biggest differentiator we have is the month. So if I put in January, the first thing it's going to say is month equals January. True. So I'm then going to go on and look at the rest of this stuff. So if month doesn't equal January, Python's just going to fall out. It's going to look at February. Then February, January and February are pretty easy because they don't split. The, the season doesn't split the month. When the season splits the month, 
it becomes more complex. So for the month of March, I can either be in winter or spring. How do I tell the difference between winter or spring when it's March? I tell it based on the day. If the day that the user input is greater than zero, and yes, we do have to check that it's greater than zero, because Zybooks might put in a negative 10. If it's greater than zero and less than or equal to 19, I'm at winter. L if the day is greater than 19 and less than 31, I'm in spring. Otherwise, it's invalid. And that's important because Python's going to give you negative 42. It's going to give you the month of um, Halloween. And I'm not saying it's going to put in October. It's going to put in a word. It's going to put in the word yellow for the month. And it expects you to be able to say that's an invalid entry. And the way you do that is, so if it put in yellow for month, you want it to get and to evaluate to negative to all these statements and then eventually um, have an, an, a final else that says it's invalid. Or maybe it's going to put in the month of October and the day of 177. That's going to also fall to invalid. Well, actually, that'll fall to the invalid for the month of October. So that's what you have to do here. And it does, it's complex, but they follow a pattern. And if you can follow the pattern here, it's actually a little simpler. Months that are not split by a season are a single one-liner and they all have ands. So they're going to have the month, and they're going to check the lower bound, and you're going to check the upper bound. Months that split, where the season splits the month, you're going to first determine that it's that month, so you're going to have a statement that's looking just for the month, and then inside that you're going to have an if, an elif, and an else. The if is going to check the, the lower and upper bounds for one season. The LF is going to check the lower and upper bounds for the next season. And the else is going to say, sorry, it's invalid. You put in, you know, minus 100 for the day. So that is what you want to do for 3.12. 3.13 is very much like that numbers one that we did with the floor operator. Somebody's going to put in a value. The first thing you're going to check it for is that it is um, greater than or equal to zero. So if it's less than or equal to zero, you're going to output no change and be done with it. Otherwise, you're going to go and you're going to do a series of calculations, dollars, quarters, dimes, nickels, and pennies. So you're going to get that whole calculation done. Then you're going to go in and you're going to put in if statements associated with how you want it to look when it comes out. Because you're not having to worry about an if statement while you're doing the calculation. You are having to deal with the if statement, though, for the output. So if you have dollars, then you're going to determine whether it's the you know dollar or dollars. The same thing with quarter. You're, if you've got quarters, you're going to say... Do I have quarters or a single quarter? Dimes, nickels, pennies, they all follow that same pattern. So once you get dollars, you've basically got um, the pattern for quarters. And these, notice, are if statements. They're not L if. So it's if num dollars, if num quarters, you know, if number of dimes. Those are not, those are different tests. You're not, you don't have any related tests here when it comes to the actual number of quarters, nickels, dimes, pennies, dollars. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Yes, there is. Hey, you're welcome to try it. 
Um, my suggestion would be is that you get the, the lab done successfully without dealing with lists or dictionaries. Um, and then maybe go try it later because your professor might take off, even if you're trying things that are outside the scope of the module, you probably still want to just get the points for that and then go try it. But yeah, there would definitely be a way to do this um, with uh, a dictionary and, and lists. You could do this, yeah, probably be a dictionary with some lists in it. Um, Well, for what students have in Module 3, that's the right way to do it. If you want to stretch and use lists and dictionaries, there are more efficient ways to do it. There are more data-driven ways to do it where you're writing considerably less code. But for what we have now, that's the proper logic. And by the way, I'm done lecturing. Does anybody want to uh, ask any questions? I know we ran over, and I apologize. There's just so much in this module to do. Okay. Going once. Going twice. Okay. Everybody have a good weekend. I should have this up tomorrow. Talk to you later.